Hi everybody, welcome back to my studio. Suzanne, teaching artist with Flushing Town Hall in day three of Global Arts for Global Kids. I'm very excited to really dive into portrait drawing. Um, we're gonna learn about an artist, very famous artist, a woman, and her name is Frida Kahlo. So here is a photograph of Frida. Very beautiful picture. And she loved to wear things in her hair, especially flowers. So let me show you another picture here. This is a photograph of Frida painting. You can see it's a black and white photograph. She was very, very well known for drawing and painting portraits, also self-portraits, so paintings of herself. And there's a little story behind her life that we'll get into. This is one of her most famous paintings. She loved animals, she loved birds, um, she had them all around her. Uh, here is another beautiful painting another self-portrait and she also loved collage. Collage is a great uh, vocabulary word so it's do you know what it means? How about a bunch of different materials that you can put together creating a piece of art. So I went ahead and just did my own little Frida Kahlo to show you. So I did a drawing of Frida and then I just happen to have paper. So if you have color paper, um, that would be wonderful. You can cut up paper. You can use your crayons from the other day. You can make birds, make flowers. I happen to have some other pieces of fabric and flowers around the house. Um, if I had buttons, I would have glued on buttons for the collage. Now mine is big, although yours is gonna be smaller because yours is gonna be a tiny one that goes into your mini art museum that we'll put all together at the end of the week. Um, so this is just day three of different art uh, that I'm gonna show you. Are you ready to get started? All right, students, thank you for waiting for me. I set up the studio so we can see each other from above. I'm going to actually use a dry erase. I think it's a lot easier for me to show you uh, than on paper. I've got Frida Kahlo here. I'm gonna do a portrait of her. I'm gonna um, show you guys and then you can pause and do it yourself, all right? We're gonna really slow it down, so don't worry about rushing. Now, back a couple of projects ago, I said to try to draw kind of like a UV. It's in between the two. And with my dry erase, I actually can use my finger and erase the lines that I don't really like. It's all right if I've got it kind of thick here because I didn't give it a headache. I'm doing it very lightly. I can decide which lines I like and erase. That's what you'll do with your pencil. You'll do this in pencil first. Now, I'm gonna put a floating vertical line. It floats right above the two, right above the UV. That's supposed to be for her part, but she doesn't really have a part. So I'm just gonna pretend for now. I'm now gonna, at the bottom of that floating line, I'm gonna go up, 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 and connect on both sides. Technically, I just turned her into a strawberry, maybe apple, but I think it looks more like a strawberry. Now she doesn't have a part, but I need the top so I can go back around for the top of her hair because all this is part of your head. It's actually where your brain is and we don't want to short change your brain. So I'm coming up and around on both sides and coming back down just like she has. Because she doesn't have a part, I'm going to erase that. That's actually where those flowers will be. Okay, now ears, we have two of them. They go on either side of your head, but you only see one on her because she's tilted to the um, side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put one ear just coming on the side of her head. 
Ears are shaped different, guys, so don't worry about it. They actually kind of look sort of like, I don't know, maybe like a peanut cut in half. Okay, so if I was to take that peanut and I was to cut it in half, that's kind of like an ear. That gives you a, a general idea of what the ear looks like. They're kind of weird looking if you, if you, I don't know, if I think so, if you ask me. Okay, so there's my little ear on the side. All right, again, you can't see it on the other side. So I'm actually gonna give her a little bit of a haircut there because she is tilted a little bit toward an angle. All right. So if you need to pause now to catch up, go ahead. All right, so everyone's on the same page with this. Okay, welcome back. Now, what I'm gonna do is I look at the neck. The neck is important. We all have one and it needs to be pretty thick, like on either side of your jaw, because it's gotta hold up your head and your head's gonna weigh like 10 pounds when you grow up. So. We need to have a pretty good sized neck to hold that up. All right, she definitely is wearing some sort of like dress, so I'm just gonna round her off there for now. This is interesting. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of make her hairline go up a little bit more because she doesn't really have the, what we call a widow's peak. So I'm just gonna go up like that. There we go. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that, looks more like it. Now, this is pretty simple and everyone's different, but just think the top of your ear is about where your eyebrows go. She has a little bit thicker, dark hair, and because she loves birds, I think she liked to, what we call emphasize, that's a good vocabulary word. She liked to really focus on those, those eyebrows, and that's how you also know that it's a portrait of Frida Kahlo. So those are her eyebrows there. Underneath, she has two eyes. Now we talked about it before, the shape of either a lemon, or you could even say a football. I know it's hard to draw two that look exactly the same. It takes practice, that I understand. That is the outside of your eye. Inside, the colored part is called the iris. We also can call it a basketball. That is the iris. It is a round shape, always round. Only kitty cats have that where it goes up and down. Inside that is what? The pupil, the little black circle. Also, I call it either a tennis ball or a golf ball. That is the only thing that you see. The light comes in there and that's how you see out not from the brown iris and not the white part on the outside. The nose, I know noses are hard, okay? So I just wanna give you a real simple way. Do a line that goes straight down, come just past your ear, okay? Straight down the middle and follow me. This is very simple. Think of the letter C. How about for cup, little C? a backward C. You could even think of like, um, what do you call it? Like when you have parentheses and then you have a nostril that's underneath, a droop down and a nostril. Super, super simple. So a nose is a line and a C and a backward C right on either side. The hole here is your nostril, another one here, and it connects underneath. That is simple. What you don't want to do is you don't want to have a pig nose. No, 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 no pig noses. All right. Those are for piggies. Okay. If you need to catch up, you can pause here. Now you have the mouth. M, mm. M for mouth. M. And again, you want it to be right in the middle because again, a symmetry, same on both sides, symmetry. How about M for mountains? See the two mountains? That's only half your mouth. You also need a smile underneath. So again, M, mountain, and then a smile 
underneath. That could be your mountain mouth. All right, I'm making it a little thicker there so you can see it. And you can even have little smiles on either side. All right, little details, you guys, eyelashes. They would come from the very corner of your eye going out. If you want her to look real, you want to add an eyelid because we all have them above and can't really shadow as much. Um, this little is called a divot. It's like a little teardrop. Everyone has one. Look in the mirror later and you'll see a little teardrop that comes between your nose and mouth. All right. Maybe even a little chin there. So this is your portrait of Frida Kahlo. I'm going to show you once again that if you have anything around the house, you can make flowers or you can draw flowers or if you want to cut out um, fabric or paper anything to embellish and decorate and maybe even an earring all right I can see behind she's got like a ribbon that's sticking out too very pretty and even some decorations so there's your Frida Kahlo remember yours is going to be small because yours is going to go into your mini art museum. All right, I'll see you back in my studio. Welcome back. That was really fun. I know that portrait drawing is hard and you just take your time and practice, practice, practice. You'll get better at it. Just draw lightly, okay, so you can erase. Um, remember that you have to do a small portrait, so make sure that yours are tiny for your mini art museum. Um, I want to show you Frida Kahlo's house. She's from Mexico, and this is the Casa Azul, which means blue house. Still stands today as a museum. Um, she unfortunately was in a bus accident when she was about 18 and in a lot of pain for throughout her whole life. So she learned to paint while in bed and really practiced and became unbelievable. She also wrote poetry. One of the things she said was, I paint self portraits because I am so often alone because I am the person that I know best. And another one that Frida Kahlo said was, at the end of the day, we can endure much more than we think we can. And that's a great saying. I love that. I want to use that for what we're going through today. So I'm excited, you guys. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. New artist, new project, getting ready to put it all together. So I'll have the lesson plans too. They're available for each day. And saying goodbye from Flushing Town Hall, Global Arts for Global Kids. See you tomorrow.